Our Gospel reading today comes from the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 11. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. He said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight, and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even if he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Search, and you will find. Knock. And the door will be open for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? So the prophet Hosea that we heard in that first reading, I think he wins the prize He's got to be the weirdest prophet in all the Bible. And, there, and the competition was pretty stiff. I mean, there are a lot of weird prophets in the Bible. I would say the runners-up, the third place, has got to be Jeremiah, although you can give Jeremiah a break. I mean, he was, he was, he was just a youngster, uh, and youngsters do weird things. Uh, but, uh, <laughs> so, you know, Jeremiah uh, goes, he, he was thinking, about what, what would be a good metaphor for God's people? And he says, how about this? I'll take my dirty underwear, and I'm going to bury it under a rock, and leave it there for a long time. And when it's really rotten and deteriorating and stinky, Jeremiah takes the rock away, picks up his dirty underwear, and says, see, this, this is what you're like, people of Israel. Uh, you're stinky, rotten people. And, and so, yeah. Thank you, Jeremiah. That was a nice try. Uh, <laughs> uh, but that wins him third place. Second place of all of the weird prophets in the Bible has got to be Balaam. Now, Balaam prophesied a long time ago, before Isaiah or Jeremiah or any of them. And um, here's what happened. God told Balaam, I want you to tell my people that they are going in the wrong direction, forsaking me and following other gods. Balaam says, no, I am not going to do it. That's going to get me in trouble. They're all going to get mad at me. They're not going to like me, so I'm not going to do it. And so Balaam gets on his donkey to ride in the opposite direction. God's angel shows up to stop his path. And so the, the donkey sees the angel, but, but Balaam doesn't see the angel. And, and, and so Balaam is, is beating the donkey, saying, keep going, keep going. And the donkey is like, I'm not going there. I'm not going there. There's an angel right there, right? So, so, so finally... Let me just read you what happens in the Bible, okay? Uh, this is from the book of Numbers, chapter 22. When the ass saw the angel of the Lord there, she cowered under Balaam. So in anger, he beat the ass with his stick. But now the Lord opened the mouth of the ass, and she asked Balaam, What have I done to you that you should beat me these three times? 
3,400 years ago, God spoke through an ass, and he's still doing it today. <laughs> if God could use Balaam's ass to speak that message, uh, God could use me, and God could use you as well. Yeah? Don't look at me that way. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. <laughs> But the weirdest prophet of them all has got to be Hosea for reasons that you just heard Brenda read. Uh, Hosea was back in the 8th century. Again, this is a very ancient text before Isaiah, Jeremiah, the, the, the classic major league prophets. Um, and Hosea uses his own experience as a metaphor for the relationship between <coughs> God and God's people. Israel had been unfaithful. They had done evil things following a false god by the name of Baal, including sacrifice of children. So as they turned away from God's word, as they turned away from following in God's ways, and turned to evil and bloodshed instead, Hosea has a message for God's people. God's message to Hosea was something like this. I want you to go and marry Gomer. That would be bad enough right there, right? <laughs> but Gomer was a prostitute. And God says, I want you to go marry Gomer the prostitute. I want you to love her. I want you to be faithful to her. I want you to provide for her and take care of her. And I want you to know all the while that Gomer doesn't love you back. And Gomer will not be faithful to you. She will continue in her old ways after you've been married. She's going to turn her back on you. She's going to be unfaithful to you. And then, thus says the Lord, I want you, Hosea, to prophesy about this. You tell me how you feel. Tell me how that feels. Because that, says God, is how I feel toward my people. Because they are unfaithful people. They are a fickle people. They are people of weak faith. They are not committed to me. And, and they turn their back on me. And they follow other ways. And they are an unprincipled people. And I'll tell you what, Jose, when you feel the pain of what that is like, when you feel the pain of Gomer's betrayal, then you can prophesy a message with some authenticity. That perhaps my people will understand that God's heart is breaking. Because God loves us. And God is faithful to us even when we are unfaithful. That is the definition of covenant. Hosea and Gomer have three kids. The first one's name is Jezreel. Jezreel is a word that literally in Hebrew means God sows. As in God sows seeds in the field. So it evokes the image of the parable of the sower and new growth and things like that, but, but that's really not the point. The, uh, the word Jezreel is also a geographic location called the Jezreel Valley, and it was in the Jezreel Valley that the evil king of Israel had uh, committed uh, uh, abominable acts, especially the sacrifice of children. If you can imagine seeing a child held captive and bound and placed on an altar and a knife being placed into that child as the child bleeds to death. That is the image, that horrific, traumatic, painful image of child sacrifice that the word Jezreel would have evoked for them at that time. So for us, you know, we hear, okay, Gomer and uh, Hosea named their first child uh, Jezreel. We're like, yeah, this is one of those random biblical names. <clears throat> Didn't feel that way then. To, to understand kind of the, the emotional impact that, that naming a child Jezreel would have had, imagine this. Imagine that Katie and I have a child and, and 
job. Oh, wonderful. Reverend John, I'm so happy for you. What's the child's name? And I said, oh, we're going to name our baby Auschwitz. He'd be like, oh. That, that would be a shocking, painful memory evoked by that name. When they name their child Jezreel, it has that emotional impact that that was the name that they would give their firstborn. The second child's name is Loruhana. Loruhana in Hebrew is a term that could mean not pitied, or it could also be translated as unloved. Okay, so that's their daughter's name, their second name. <coughs> the third child is called Lo Ami, and Lo Ami is translated not mine. My goodness, what a family. Hello, I'd like to introduce you to my lovely wife, Gomer. She's a prostitute. Uh, and my first wife, or my first child's uh, name is Jezreel, but we, 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 just, we just call him uh, Auschwitz. And uh, then I have another daughter. This is my cute little daughter. Uh, her name is Unloved. And this is my uh, youngest child, not mine. What a family. <laughs> this is like the Adams family or something, you know. Uh, but, but, but what's going on here? All of this sounds like a very dark, uh, stormy prophet of, of doom and gloom. But let me tell you something. Hosea is a powerful prophet with a powerful message of God's love. You see, the whole premise of this prophecy is this. Hosea loves his wife. Hosea is faithful to her even when she is unfaithful to him. Gomer leaves Hosea to go off running away with other men and the people of God leave God and turn their backs on God. But God still loves you. God still loves us. God remains faithful to us even when we are not. And so, just as Hosea still loves his wife and asks her to come back to him with all her heart, so too God loves us and asks us to return to God with all our heart. Even though we have forsaken God, God does not forsake us. There's a little movie clip I'd like to show you uh, and, and I say it with a caveat, uh, if, if, if you, well, never mind, I, I'll say the caveat later on, but, but, but this is uh, from a movie, it's, a, it's like a minute and 15 second uh, movie clip, I don't think it really needs an introduction, it's from the movie The Mexican, have you ever, anybody seen that, anybody seen The Mexican? Oh, that's a great movie, uh, but anyway, uh, so you'll recognize these actors, and I don't think that this scene needs any introduction.
When two people love each other, but they just can't seem to work it out, when do you get to that point when enough is enough? Well, she gives the right answer. Never. Now, I pointed out that there was a caveat to that. I wasn't sure if I wanted to show this video for that reason. If you're in an abusive relationship, get out of that abusive relationship. That's different. That's not two people who love each other. But the point is this, that there is never a point, if you truly love each other, that you give up on that. And this ultimately is Hosea's message. It is a story of endless love. He is going to pursue her and bring her back just as God pursues us to bring us back to God. And so we read in Hosea a little bit later on, chapter 2, this, this powerful message of that return. Israel, I will take you for my wife in faithfulness, and you shall know the Lord. And on that day, I will answer, says the Lord. I will answer the heavens, and they shall answer the earth. And the earth shall answer. Remember that first child, Jezreel, God sows. And they shall answer, Jezreel, I will sow him for myself in the land. And remember that second child was Lorohana, which is a not pity it. And I will have pity on Lorohana and rename her my beloved. And that third child was called Loami, not my people. And I will say to Loami, you are my people. <coughs> and he shall say, you are my <coughs> No doubt about it, Hosea is the weirdest prophet there ever was. <laughs> but I think Hosea is also my favorite. And I keep coming back to Hosea again and again because it's a powerful lesson, a lesson of the heart. Hosea's dysfunctional family becomes a great metaphor for a dysfunctional church. His broken marriage becomes a metaphor for a broken relationship between God and God's people. Because we don't always follow in His ways. His endless, relentless, persevering love becomes a metaphor for the persevering, endless love that God has for each one of us. Most people think of prophets as like fortune tellers. They're going to tell the future. But the role of the prophet as we see it in the scripture is not to foretell the, the, the future. I'm sorry, not to foretell the future, but rather to foretell an ancient message to current times, to current circumstances of your life. So here now, brothers and sisters, the voice of God has spoken through the prophet Hosea. You are God's beloved child. You always have been. You always will be. And to you, who may be known as Jezreel, know this, that God is sowing a new seed. To you, who may have been known as Lo Ruhama, unloved, you who thought you were unloved, know this, you shall be called by a new name, which is God's beloved. Lo-ami, not mine. You who thought you were not God's people, know this, that you are called by a new name, and that name is you are my people. For thus says the Lord, my love for you is eternal. It is unconditional. It is endless. And I will pursue you, and I will forgive you, and I will love you, and I will seek you eternally, forever, without end. Thus says the Lord. 